Hi everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. My name is Di, I'm sitting here with Tony, and we'd really love to take you through a session on applying for our scholarships for 2021. We wanted to give you a closer look at the submission process to encourage as many people as we possibly can applying for our scholarships this year. So Tony, what scholarships are available? Well, Di, we've got three scholarships available this year. So we have the Entrepreneurial Scholarship, the Business Booster Scholarship, which we had last year, and we'll tell you a little bit about those, a little bit more about those um, in time to come. This year I'm really excited because we have a new scholarship and it's for women who lead in a business. So it's for staff members that you might have who have a leadership role who don't necessarily own a business. So I think that's really exciting. That really is exciting. And as a business owner, I love this, the fact that we've brought this one into uh, the choice. So we've got some key dates here that we need to make sure that people put into their diaries. So let's talk about these dates and how important they are. Absolutely. April the 23rd, applications close. May 12th, winners are announced. Okay, so we've all got pretty busy lives, so make sure you jot that down in your diary uh, for anyone who's interested. April the 23rd is going to come around pretty damn quick. So you're probably thinking, is it for me? How are we going to convince people to, uh, to either nominate somebody else or to take the plunge and um, do, a, do a nomination themselves? What, I, what do you suggest? Oh, I think, Di, in the past what I've heard is, oh, I'm only new to business, so I don't think it's for me. Or, oh, I've been in business for a long time, I'm not sure it's for me. So what we say is it doesn't matter at what point you are in your career. Um, this is a great opportunity for professional development, just a great opportunity to gather some skills that will take your business to the next level. And I think even the application process itself helps you to clarify thinking, identify gaps in training. Um, the other thing is it's validation, just validation for your venture, for what you're doing. That's a key word there, Validate, validating what you're currently doing is, is really important part of the process of being successful in business. So what is the process? Well, Di, the process, in the past it's been self-nominate. What we're saying this year is self-nominate or nominate someone else. Because I think it's always easier to say, wow, that person does a great job, than to say, I'm doing a great job, I'm going to nominate myself. So we're encouraging you to self-nominate or to nominate someone else. A written application, which is the same as last year, there'll be three questions in each application. And this year we're asking for a name of a referee. So if you find it difficult to say nice things about yourself, we know your referee will not find it difficult to say amazing things about you. We're also asking that if you win the scholarship that you commit to sharing some of your learnings or your experiences, either at a spotlight session or even a small little article in, in the newsletter. That's absolutely perfect. What we've found in previous years that the scholarship winners have been so um, generous in sharing their learning because we all learn from each other and uh, we would hope that our winners from, from this year's scholarships would uh, offer to do the same. Fantastic. Yeah. Alright, so let's drill down a little bit actually on the, the specific scholarships. So first one up we've got on the screen here, Entrepreneur Scholarship. Entrepreneur, I love that word. I remember hearing a definition years ago of it and um, the definition went something like, well, an entrepreneur is just a braggy business person. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's not true at all. So, so let's have a look at what an entrepreneur is. An entrepreneur is someone that's in tune with their passion, someone that finds problems, imagines solutions, someone that's questioning how can things be done better, getting the drift die. Aren't we all a bit <laughs> entrepreneurial? Yeah, that um, sounds like me. Yeah, <laughs> someone that gets excited about all possibilities, opportunities, takes risks, calculated ones, um, reinvents, changes. Haven't we all done that in the last 12 months? Above all, entrepreneurs execute. And they thrive on competition, which is really important. And you've raised a really good point there, Tony. 
certainly 2020 threw up a lot of challenges and hurdles for so many of us in business and um, you know I think it's really important that we can all share that learning to make sure that uh, you know we be, we're better prepared moving forward. Yeah absolutely Di. So with regards to the Entrepreneur Scholarship how do you describe yourself as an entrepreneur? Well I suppose the first thing you do is you show that you understand what an entrepreneur is. So we've given you some tips there, some definitions. By no means is that an exhaustive list, but it's a starting point. It's also about knowing your strengths and your entrepreneurial qualities. So Di, what would you say is your entrepreneurial quality? How's that, that throw me in the <laughs> deep end? This is so off script. Uh, one of my, <laughs> payback, uh, one of my strengths, I guess, would be um, daring to be bold. I'd agree with that 100%. And if I had to choose mine, I would say it's reinventing. Baby reinventions that I think, you know, once you've, if you've been in a business for, I've been in the same business for 12 years, you have no choice but to reinvent. Absolutely. Mm. So if you want to serve a group of people by producing a great product or delivering fantastic service and you're prepared to work hard in your business, then maybe you're entrepreneurial. And you should think about the Entrepreneurial Scholarship. All right. Next slide talks about um, describing the service or product because every business you have that you're in, you have either a product that you're selling or a service that you're providing. So how is it that we can be clear about our service or our products as a part of our application process? Yeah, I think, I think we're all clear about what service or product we offer. I think what we're asking you to do is to really think about what stage you're at because this is going to give you some really good little clues about your priorities and your challenges. So you know, are you at the development stage where your product or your service is just an idea and you're investing heavily in research and developing or are you in the introduction stage? You've launched and you're relying heavily on marketing right now. Or are you, are you in the growth stage? You're establishing yourself, you've got some competitors, sales are growing. Or are you in the maturity stage? This is us, Di. <laughs> Where your sales growth might be slowing, you've been able to reduce costs, there's increased competition, and you're at that reinvention stage. There's four really clear stages that business goes through. And uh, yeah, we are, you and I are at the maturity <laughs> stage, but we can, we can wrap things. Not that we're both slowing down, but uh, yeah. Or that we're mature. Oh, well, well, that's a very key point as well. But I think what it does show is that it doesn't matter at what stage of your business you're at, the entrepreneurial scholarship is there, available. Next, we want to talk about your target audience. Your target audience is not everyone. Um, you truly are task in defining your target group and to identify and understand your particular niche so you can really dominate it. This is such a hard question, isn't it, Di? Whenever I'm, I'm asked, who is your target audience? I think of my young people that come in on a Friday night and have a drink before they go out. I think of my, um, my generation that likes to come and have a dance. I think of my tradies that come in the morning. So I want to say everyone is my target audience. And of course, you do, you do have a variety and a whole diverse range of people coming in, but when you're thinking in terms of your target audience, this is about where are you going to spend your marketing dollars? Yeah, very important. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question here, how target audience demonstrating that you understand your customer base. That's, this can be tricky. It is, isn't it? So, you know, who are your current customers? And why do they buy from you? Why do your customers buy from you, Di? What is it that we do differently versus our competitors? That's right. And really drill down. Who are they? What's their personality, their language, their dress, their age, their job? Get inside your customer's head. What do they want? What's their motivation? Why do they come to you? Why do they need you? Very good point. And as a business owner, that's critical so that you can stay focused on your customers' needs rather than what you think they need. All right, biggest challenge? Yeah, this, again, there's so many challenges and daily challenges. So I guess I'm saying step out of the daily grind challenges. 
oh my goodness, I don't have enough staff today. Heck, such and such hasn't arrived. Step out of your daily challenges and think about your big overall challenges. Um, and I've just made a list maybe of some of the challenges that <laughs> are big in my head at the moment. Maybe it's scaling without compromising on, on your culture. Maybe it's um, creating scalable processes. Maybe it's increasing your sales but without spending too much so that you can increase your profit. It's Maybe it's, It is. Maybe it's tweaking your mission. I don't know, humanising your brand. Maybe it's maintaining your share in a saturated market. Whatever your big challenge is, have a think about your big challenge. Beautiful. All right, so that wraps up the entrepreneurial uh, scholarship. Now we're going to talk about the business booster. Yeah, so the business booster, again, at any stage of your business, you know, the word boost, to lift or raise by pushing from behind. So that gives us a hint, doesn't it? So in this, in this scholarship, we're asking you to know where your business is at, which would suggest you have some reflective processes or review processes in your business. We'll be looking that you've got some clarity around your purpose, your why, your vision. Looking for the capacity to plan, to set priorities. You know, I always ask myself, all right, I know I have a million things to do on my to-do list, but what are the three priorities that will keep my business moving forward? Some days I just say, what's the one thing, just the one thing I can do today that pushes me forward? And this one's also saying, well, if you want to boost your business, move it forward, you've got to know your numbers. And last year showed us more than, I think, any, any other time in our business that we need to know our numbers. So what systems have we got in place that help to keep us sustainable and in growth? So really, you're telling your business's story, aren't you? Which is very important because that really helps to, I guess, help the judges decide how much you really know about what your business is about. Mm. You could have the best business idea, but if you don't know the numbers or you don't have the cash flow, you're not going to remain in business for very long at all. So deciding which details help bring your business story to life, you, you're asking to describe key moments and craft your own story around them. So tell me a bit more about this. Yeah, I think it's always hard to tell a business story. There's so much to the story. I always think, I'm a numbers girl, so I say, what are the three key things key moments that have defined your business. So what are the four key moments? I mean, for me, it's the day that Chris walked into our store. We'd been open for 10 months. He walked in and said, I'm a sourdough baker and patisserie chef from Melbourne. I'm looking for a job. Can you point me in the direction of any bakeries? At that point, we just sold coffee and sandwiches. And I said, oh yeah, I've got a spare room out the back. That's where we can start baking. So that was a really defining moment for, for me. But I, I guess if you're trying to craft your business story, which, which you will be doing for this scholarship, the business booster one, it's, you know, what do you do? What problem do you solve? How's your product or service different? Why should I care? Why is the world a better place? because of your business. I love that point. I love that question too. Why is the world a better place? Yeah. Why should I care? Yeah, exactly. No, that's, that's good. Really good food for thought for everybody. And um, when people actually spend some quality time drilling down in their business, they'll be, I think it will put a few smiles on people's dials yeah. once they realise what their business is actually doing for our community and uh, for, the, for the world. And it gives you something really personal and really deep to be able to write about, about yourself and your business. Project forward. Yes. Project, <laughs> I love this. Project right. forward to write an audacious and compelling story of your future. Well, I guess if you're applying for a business booster scholarship, you're saying you're boosting your business forward. So let's have a think about how you would write a really compelling story of your future and I guess this is a vision question what's the vision for your business and I always think if you want to get away from some of the cliche stuff well my vision is I like to do things creatively it's the writer in me or the teacher in me 
Um, so I've just given you a few there. Try these. Imagine a future world in which your business is dominating the market. What does the world look like and what's your business doing? Or it's 2030 and your business has just been awarded the highest award possible. Write the announcer's intro to the award. How amazing would that be? <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine it's 2030 and you're travelling to your business and as you're travelling you see a newsstand with the latest copy of your favourite magazine and your business is on the cover. What's the headline? Be bold. <laughs> Yours would be be bold. So, be audacious. <laughs> be brave. And it's not bragging. No, it's not. It's not bragging. <laughs> okay, priorities. You won't grow without them, so that's true. Why so is this important? Well, it's really important, isn't it, Ty? I mean, you would know because I know you're a goal setter and a priority setter. <laughs> you do this, so you should be speaking about this one. Um, I guess if you're boosting your business forward, then you've, you've got to have some priorities. So I ask myself these two questions when I'm trying to identify my priorities. Why does your company exist and why should we care? And what do I need to focus on that will grow change for me now? And I love this quote, and I, and I can't write on there where it's from because I don't know who wrote it. So I should have put unknown source, but I learned that we can do anything, but we can't do everything, at least not at the same time. Timing is everything. And that's the thing with priorities. If we've got 50 things on our list, yes, they're all important, but we can't do them all at the same time. So some of the clarity around your thinking, I think, when you're writing the application for this scholarship is to sort through and to say to yourself, all right, I'm only allowed to have three. So what are the most important three that will push me closer to what I need? Beautiful. Awesome. And finally, our, our third and you know, most exciting, I believe, personally, mm. <laughs> because it's new and um, it's about acknowledging women who lead in a business. So what do we want, uh, what do we want our applicants to, to cover on this particular scholarship? Yeah, well, we're asking, we'll be asking um, the women to identify their role, so their actual leadership role. And it may not even be so much what they do, but their leadership role in the business. We're also asking leadership style strengths and areas to develop and then we're asking for leadership challenges and what sort of strategies you use to overcome them. And look, that sounds like we're asking a lot there but we're just, what we're saying is reflect on yourself as a leader. What do you do? What are you doing that, that you go home and say, yeah, that was good, I did a good job? And then where are the gaps? Where are you thinking, jeepers, I wish I knew a little bit more? about this or I wish I had some other strategies to deal with this. So leadership style, frameworks of leadership? Yeah, I think it's difficult, isn't it, to identify your leadership style. So in the hot seat, Di, you didn't know I was going to do this, but Di, how would you describe your leadership style? Mm, our four choices we have here. <laughs> um, well, I, uh, I would like to consider myself transformational leader, helping people to transition into the roles that they would like to do and helping them to pass that um, knowledge and influence on to other people. So I like to be a change maker. I like <laughs> to get out there and do stuff that other people aren't prepared to do. So I uh, like, yeah, that, I would say that's how I would describe myself. I guess my peers and my team, they may support that um, analogy, I well, hope this, so. This peer does. <laughs> <laughs> That's lucky. But of course, you know, you've got, um, you've got a zillion different types of books and data to collect on leadership styles and so on. You've got your structural that rely on, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's with data and policies. And then, of course, you've got the human resource type leader that really is very supportive, empowered, offers empowerment to their teams, um, political, building lots of networks and connections, I guess I got that <laughs> a bit in there as well, and symbolic, you 
know, it's all about the stories, the vision, the inspiration, the purpose, the values, all of those important things that yeah. uh, make it happen. And, and as leaders, we know we work across all four sort yeah. of frameworks. And look, there's a million, there's a million different frameworks out there. I just threw one up there just to get you thinking. Um, and we also have favourite spots to work in. I mean, I'm. I like working in the human resource and the symbolic kind of frameworks, but I have to do lots of structural stuff as well. And that's, um, yeah. Well, that's what keeps the business afloat. Isn't <laughs> that's it? right. But any kind of leadership style, it's very fluid, and you have to you have to be honest and mature enough to understand that one size doesn't fit all, and to being able to identify what leadership style suits the situation that you're in. That's what makes you an effective leader. And, and 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 respected one as well, which is important. Yeah, absolutely. And you spoke about transformational leadership. All, all we've done here is just given, I suppose, some characteristics, some of the characteristics of a transformational leader. So when you're reflecting on yourself and your leadership style, this could, um, I don't know, be a little helping hand for you. I look at, when I look at that list, I say, well, yes, they're all absolutely important. But how important is it to be instrumental and calm in times of crisis? So important as a leader that, um, yeah, that you have that unshakable positive attitude. I like the analogy of being the swan on the water, <laughs> so graceful above the water. But Definitely. The, but the little legs are going flat out underneath, but yeah. only, only yourself knows that. The, the image that you portray amongst your team and your, and your colleagues is, is that unshakable positive attitude. Absolutely. And even when you're looking to define in, in this application your leadership challenges, this list could also be a start for your leadership challenges. Apparently, the biggest leadership challenge is human resource, if you read all the, the stats. Yes, it and is. People can, managers manage numbers in a business, leaders lead people. So uh, being an effective leader is all about being a great people person. And from my perspective, the biggest challenge that I help other businesses overcome is those challenging issues involving members of their team and their staff. So being a great leader is all about, you know, putting your hand up if you need to. We can't all be experts in everything, but one very important thing about being a great leader is knowing where your skills may fall short a little bit and knowing who to call to ask for help. You know, showing your vulnerability and asking an expert that you know, can you help me out? This is my situation and how, how can I fix it? Yeah, absolutely. The leadership challenges, um, you can start with this list that we've got here. You may have others as well. Um, you know, jump on Google and see what it says about leadership styles. <laughs> Throw in something a little bit different, get creative, and um, we look forward to, to reading all about it. So the business plan, really important. You could have the best business idea as possible, but if you don't have it down on paper, things can turn pear shape really, really quickly. So, Tony, what does a business plan actually help you? Well, what, what we're asking, I think in the past it's been part of the actual application, we're asking you to attach a business plan. So, that gives you the freedom to make it as, um, as thorough or as simple as, as you like. But a business plan is crucial. I mean, I'm a planner. I like plans. must admit, I don't like those three-year plans or even the 12-month plan even though part of me knows that, that you need to plan across 12 months, three years, I like the quarterly plan. So I operate on three month plans. So I would even be happy if someone submitted a quarterly plan. Awesome. Did you know that people don't um, plan to fail, they just fail to plan? Yes, I love that saying and it's true. So, it's what, so, so what you're saying, as long as it's something that indicates that they have been thinking about their business and what they're going to do moving forward, preferably on paper, yeah. because that helps to keep it real, yeah. it keeps us on focus. It's certainly what financial institutions will be asking for if you need any funding to help boost your business or to get any uh, increased capital. 
So yes, it's very important that every business has a business plan. And those business plans are, are live documents. They're not set in stone, but it helps us to stay on track. It's like gutter guards when you go ten pin bowling. <laughs> <laughs> And that, you've got an effective plan. Yeah, and there are lots of different pro formers out there. I, I would say don't feel pressured by any of the pro formers. Make your own. And if your business plan says, this is my vision for the future and this is my mission, this is why you should care, this is who I stand for, and here are my priorities for the next quarter or the next 12 months, and here are four or five things I reckon I should do to meet these priorities. And you have the beginnings good beginnings of a business plan. Sounds perfect. And of course, if anyone's struggling with the help uh, of not knowing where to start, we certainly are available to help. I've got access to some good templates that are in plain English that helps us to really think about our businesses as well. But shake it up a bit, everyone. Like if you're serious, um, let's have some innovation. Let's, let's do a quarterly plan. Show that you're actually thinking about it and having it down on paper, which is very important to share. All right, we've come to the end of our slideshow here. So to recap, when do we have to have it in by? We have to have it in by the 23rd of April. Beautiful. And if somebody has watched this, um, <laughs> our little impromptu <laughs> um, <laughs> what can we say, our little impromptu production, and they get a bit stuck. Are you happy for people to give you a buzz? Oh, 100%. And that goes for me as well. Um, as I said, my name is Di. I own Di Monday Training Solutions. I'm located on Panola Road. Google me and um, send me an email. If you got stuck with anything, I would love to help you out and really um, put in the best application that you possibly can. Thanks to Women in Business and Regional Development for once again having some amazing sponsors that are really supporting these scholarships. We can't do it without them. So um, thanks to all our sponsors. If you've got any information, jump on the Women in Business and Regional Development website. And um, yeah, I think that's a wrap, Tony. That's a wrap. Thank you, Di.